Let us begin with one of the luminaries that perhaps will offer itself for our early contemplation. The Egyptians declared that Isis represented or symbolized the lunar power. But this was not enough in itself, because in all these ancient peoples we can't exhaust their thinking with a single statement. Therefore, we have to go further. Isis representing the lunar energy from Esau, meaning ice, frozen. Something held locked, crystallization. These terms might be applied to what we have often held to be the condition of things on the moon. But Isis, as the lunar mystery, represents the moon in the form of the generative impulse of the moon, the moon as mother, the moon as the source of fecundity, the lunar cycle, which is particularly preserved and was anciently religiously noted as being tied to the menstruation cycle, the cycle of fertility and of generation. Now the moon we know has two phases or qualities which are particularly noticeable, namely that it increases and decreases in light, and that it is at some times full and at some times totally invisible. Also that it may appear as a crescent or as a partial sphere. So the Egyptians had two deities, the white and the black Hathor, to use in connection with the lunar phases. And the black and white Hathor governed or ruled the underworld. And the underworld, of course, now, for our thinking, is our eighth sphere or the earth. This is the underworld of Plato to which men come not of, uh, when uh, go not when they die, but come when they are born. For well, this is the purgatorial, the underworld. Right here among us, as we are gradually coming to realize more clearly every day. <laughs> now, Isis has a sister, whose symbol is called Nephthys, from which we have our word Naphtha. Now, Isis as always as her symbol, the empty throne of the sun god. And Nephthys has as her symbol a bowl, a hollow bowl. The hollow bowl, of course, <coughs> is the symbol of the earth, because the earth is the receptacle of energies, according to the ancients. It is the mysterious cup which catches the wine of the Eucharist, or the wine of life. The earth is the San Grail, which contains within itself the San Grail Real, or the blood of the king. It, the earth is the receptic, receptacle, just as the physical body of man is the receptacle of the principles which make him a living thing. So Nephthys represents the earth, or the lunar energy, in its physical potential. So the moon and the earth are sisters. And if you go into the ancient astronomy, you will be able to suspect that this could well be true. And in your Indian, East Indian doctrines, the affinity between the moon and the earth is very close and might be regarded as a relationship, such as that between Isis and Nephthys. Now, in the other systems, we find other deities representing this. We have, for example, Diana, who is the uh, great lunar deity of the Ephesians and Etruscans and other Greeks. Her bow is the lunar crescent. She is the huntress. 
She is hunting for the deer and is often found or represented in ancient art throwing her javelin or firing her arrow into the flank of a stag. The deer, of course, is an earth-moon symbol and has always been so represented from the deers on the Yggdrasil tree of Odin to the deer that pulls the uh, sleigh of Santa Claus. The deer has always been a symbol. It has been a symbol of imagination. It has been a symbol of the various processes over which the moon has dominion. The lunar goddess, then, plays many parts among many peoples. She is the huntress. She is the the generator or generatrix of the world. She is the great mother. She is the mother of mysteries. She is the symbol of experience, of the lunar ancestry, the things that came before, the night into which a man turns at death, and the night of time from which he was born. The night-moon symbol is very, very prevalent among ancient peoples. We also have the Indian symbol of Maya, or illusion. And Maya, Mari, Marie, Maya. All of these things are water symbols. The proper name for pure water would be Virgin Mari. Maya is illusion, represented in India, usually by the reflection of of objects upon the surface of water. Mirage, caused by water in the atmosphere. As a water symbol, uh, the moon is the origin of life, because ancient peoples knew that life came out of the primordial slime. This slime was in the Greek and, and Chaldean mysteries referred to as elus, or mire the primordial slime from which the monsters of Besaurus history, the Phoenician account of Genesis, these monsters came out of the primal slime. Elus is the root of the word Elium, and Elium was the original name of Troy, the city that was conquered by Ulysses. And the victory of Ulysses over Troy, the mystery of Helena, or Helen, over whom the Trojan War was fought, Helen is an ancient name for the moon. So we have astronomy playing its part all the way through these stories. And we find almost always your lunar symbol as representing an illusion of some nature which must be overcome. Also, illusion in the sense of primordial ignorance from which wisdom is born. Therefore, reality is the child of illusion. Reality is born of illusion. Man born into the world is born into a state of ignorance from which he must ascend or which he must transcend by his own wisdom, (laughs) skill, and understanding. Therefore, Through the illusion of life, through the miseries and misfortunes of ignorance, through wrong action, man is gradually pressed on to the achievement of truth. Therefore, truth is forever born of illusion. And it is also the radiant light born of the mother darkness, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. So in other legends and in other peoples, we also find this story of the moon divinity. We have, for instance, uh, the interesting note that when Michelangelo made his magnificent heroic figure of Moses, he placed lunar horns upon the forehead of the great uh, lawgiver of Israel. No one knows why this occurred. (laughs) <laughs> but we do know that the ancient Jehovestic cult, which caused or leads to what is called 
uh, the root J in the Jewish uh, religious history was originally a lunar volcano cult. Whereas the Yellowistic cult, or the branch E of the ancient Jewish descent, was the cult of the artificers of Egypt and the Elohim or the builders. And these two were originally separate religions, but they were blended together. The horns upon the forehead of Moses remind us also of the horns upon the altars of the tabernacle, the horns upon the crown of Osiris, the horns upon the helmets of the Vikings and the ancient Nordic peoples. These horns are the lunar horns. Just as surely as the ancient Ark of Noah, or the Ark of Noah, is the horizontal or fallen lunar crescent capable of holding water in the ancient beliefs, what we call the wet moon. Many, many such parallels. But now let us pass to another group just to see what kind of trouble we can really get into.